An energy spy is someone that goes into classrooms and checks if the lights are on or off and the monitors on the computer. We're, We're energy, energy spies. spies. We're energy spies. It's one thing to have a few junior James and Jane Bonds watching out for your carbon crimes, but at Sandhill School in Oxford, this secret service just keeps getting bigger. The inspiring combination of a five-year-old school built with energy efficiency in mind and a staff committed to creating energy awareness among the children, Sandhills is a model of how a 21st century primary school can get the green message across in a fun and practical way. We're trying to generate this sense in the children that what they do now really will have an effect on the world that they live in in the future. Newly qualified teacher Emma Lacey has been involved in many recent projects. She looks for new ways of spreading the green message, like this version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, in school assembly. While Emma is a recent driving force, the school's green agenda goes back further than the five years they've been in their new building. When we were planning the school, we looked at all sorts of ways to save energy and to promote green issues in the school and the site. So we put in several features that do that. For example, all the lights in classrooms are on a motion detector, so if there's no one in the classroom, the lights turn themselves off. We've also got a, an interesting water system because we built a pond, but in order to fill the pond, we've uh, got our rainwater actually running into our pond. So there's an underground tank where the rainwater is stored and then it fills the pond. We're going to go and read the meter to see how much energy we've saved. In another part of the school, energy spies join caretaker Mick Philpot as he explains the school's energy reading. Right, this is a thing we do on the first of every month. Four, three, three, eight, The children take down their own records six. in order to check that the school is using the energy carefully. The children have a really positive attitude towards all of the environmental work that we do here. Um, I think they really passionately believe in, in what they're trying to do. I think it's a very genuine thing from them. Emma uses drama as a way of highlighting green issues performed in the school's open-air amphitheatre. I'm worried about polar bears if they get extinct. For my children when I'm older might not be able to experience them. If we keep putting pollution in the air, we won't have anywhere to live. We've been working on a theatre project which is based on the idea of some children going to an island, finding a new world. Um, it's all very beautiful. They then ruin the island in the same way that humans are on planet Earth. The people then disappear and then creatures, which the children have all devised themselves, come in and rescue the world in various very random ways. So we're trying to kind of make it very cross-curricular. While one part of the energy group conscientiously recycles organic waste from the school's kitchens down by the specially made pond, at the other, the gardening club is underway. Hannah Mortimer is insistent that the children aren't just passing the time or learning for the sake of it. They're growing food and becoming real gardeners. Well, I think it's important that we do proper gardening because we've been growing food that we enjoy eating and that gets used in the school kitchen. Um, and we're also learning things at the same time, aren't we, Lily? Yeah. What kind of things, Lily, do we like to find in our garden? Worms. Sandhills may seem to have it all. It's in an idyllic setting, it's new and it was built with energy efficiency in mind, but it's the genuine commitment of the staff and the pupils themselves that have already earned them an eco-school's green flag. When there was a shortfall in funding for the school wind turbine, the headmaster looked to other sources of income. We had to find something like £15,000 and we did that by putting together a number of, of sponsors and, and benefactors. We had support from our parents and children. We did a, a copper collection in school. We invited parents to help us by sponsoring a bit of the turbine, so sponsors gave as little as £25. So it meant that we generated all the money from charitable sources and not from the money that the school has to use to run the school and to provide the resources and equipment for the children. And better yet, the children are learning important lessons that will see them through life. Oh, I certainly think the message gets home because the children here have all got incredibly strong characters. 
they really understand that the reason why they're doing it is because they want to make a better place for themselves when they're older and for the next generation.